Hello, and welcome to the next episode of Lost in Criterion. I'm John Patrick Owatari Dorgan, and with me today is a man who eats 15 bananas a day. That's your cue, Adam. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was, I was absorbing my, my mental image of myself eating 15 bananas in a day. Because I imagine that I do it in one sitting. Yeah, oh, I'm sure you do too. And, uh, yeah, I mean, no, I don't, I'm you not going to pace your myself on bananas. <laughs> I, I get leg cramps. I need... 15 bananas worth of potassium, of potassium yeah. per 15, day. Yeah. I'm the Adam Less, and uh, I don't actually eat 15 bananas. Pat's a liar. That's what we in the biz call a fib. <laughs> it's a little white lie that helps everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, no one's hurt by it. Obviously, I'm not in a blind rage being accused of eating bananas. Um, but uh, the, what, we, what you can't hear on the podcast is that as soon as I said that, I'm just like flipped his bed over. Well, I had this punch in the hand, wall. And now it's in it's in many pieces. So angry but... all the time, Adam. I have I have any counseling issues. is what you need. It comes with my being uh, an absolute pacifist. Yeah. It just And the Hulk. Happens. And the Hulk. Ah, uh, this week, this week we're talking about the Red Shoes, uh, directed by The Archers. Uh, Which is as weird. They call themselves. Yeah, that they had the little name. Um, Michael Powell and Emmerich Pressburger. They, um, I've heard conflicting things on this. Uh, I've heard that they co wrote in a way that Pressburger wrote the first draft, passed it to Powell, he did touch ups, and they passed it back and forth. Um, I've heard that Pressburger did all the writing and Powell did all the directing. Um, but in whatever case, they, uh, they were a team, so they signed both their names. Uh, and you know, the kind, archers, kind of like the Cohen, kind of like the Cohen brothers, you know, which are not the Cohen they brothers just... anymore. Oh no, no, you're thinking of the Wachowskis. Oh, you're right. I yeah, get confused. That was. Thank you for making the, a reference to to. That was really needless, Pat. I'm sorry. Thanks for bringing that up. I get confused. You know, it's well, yeah, it's but okay. it's not fair it's to okay. call them the Wachowski brothers anymore. Well, that's no, not, they're just that's the not respecting now. Choice. It's true. No, it's 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 fine. You know. So I was I, I, I was correcting. Not, I was trying to make you're not trying to make light correct. of it. I was not making so, fun. Yeah, yeah. You're. I I understand where you're going. Anyway, the Coens are still sorry. Brothers. I get confused. The Wachowskis are are now siblings. Right. And and there's nothing wrong with that. Can we just cut this part of the podcast out? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to leave that. Okay. In. But anyway, this is Michael Powell and Emmerich uh, Pressburger. They're uh, not writing brothers and directing. Either. They're not brothers. It's true. Uh, Pressburger uh, was. Uh, he lived in Germany, but I don't think he was... I'm not sure if he was German by descent. Nonetheless, he was Jewish, um, <coughs> which is why he ended up in Britain. <coughs> um, also, the guy who... Uh, the one dancer. Um, is it the dancer? I don't no, know. No, it's not the dancer. Man, it's a, I don't want to be mean, no, I'm but sorry. all the male dancers look the same to me. No, it's true. Uh, the uh, the director, our main, oh, okay. our main guy... Um, is uh, is is also German and and a uh, possibly also a vampire, gay. Um, possibly a vampire, but but nonetheless a homosexual. I love saying what? homosexual. It's really it's something. It's there's something wrong in my head. Yeah, I was I like, when, but, as soon as you said, it, I was like, um, what's going on here? <laughs> anyway, uh, he's gay and he's German and he got out of Germany really quick too. Understandable, uh, according to all sources I can find, because that's uh, yeah. Anyway, so they're both living in England now. And Pressburger doing this, hooked up with Michael Powell. This uh, originally came up as an idea in uh, the mid-30s and then got put on a back burner when the war came up, um, which leads to an interesting quote from Powell, uh, which I'll, I'll say and then we'll, we'll cut, into the, uh, cut into the intro, I think. Um, Powell says, For ten years we've been told to go out and die for freedom and democracy, but now the war is over. The Red Shoes told us to go out and die for art. Shoes, you know the 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 main plot of the uh, 
of the ballet in the red shoes is the Hans Christian Andersen. I had tale. never heard of it um, though. You hadn't. No. Uh, well, I mean, it's it's kind of it's not necessarily the whole the whole perpetual dancing shoes. I think is is an older idea I've too. Anderson, I've seen. Yeah, that's Anderson's something I'm aware of. of that but is, yeah, like shoes dancing you to your death, but not. Yeah. That's I. I think that happens in a couple of uh, Looney Tunes. Too. Precisely, which is where I get yeah. most of my cultural knowledge from. <laughs> exactly. The issue is that I did not realize that this was an actual thing, like a ah. that had been written. Yeah, by somebody who isn't well, the was. Looney Tunes. <laughs> well, it was, and it is, um, and yeah, they. There's a lot of really interesting choices in this movie. There's a lot of, and, yeah. <laughs> and performing the entire ballet is is definitely one of them. Oh. And I don't, I don't want to say interesting in a way. See, I like your reaction there because the first note I have on my on my papers is I like I said I like how it establishes the fantasy elements of this movie very quickly by having everyone rush in super excited to watch a ballet. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Well, here's the thing is, like, when I watched it, I don't dislike ballet. Yeah. Actually, I kind of enjoy ballet. I, I like most forms of musical theater, okay? Yeah. But because of the weird-ass fantasy elements they threw in mm-hmm. to the ballet, rather than just showing us the ballet, it made me very uncomfortable. So it didn't work for you? Not really, no. <clears throat> parts of it did. Like, um, I, liked- I, I really want to get the parts I liked out of the way. Okay. When okay. he, as the conductor, um, mm-hmm. I forget his name now. Um, what's his name? The the conductor. Don't you have the Wikipedia? Yeah, open? but have you seen the Wikipedia? It's huge. It's a bit long for me to read to like skim through. Um, <sighs> Boris. No, 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 no. Lermontov. No, the, that's no, 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 no. The, the conductor is the. At oh, the time, not the conductor. I'm sorry, Julian Castor. Yeah, okay. Julian Castor is the, the conductor during the performance of the Red Shoes. Yeah, when he walks yeah, on the, the stage, conductor. Boris is the director, and then is replaced by the main dancer. That's brilliant. Mm-hmm. It worked yeah. great. Yeah, the, the, when there's just the superimposed playing, ocean, know. doesn't work so well. Yeah. Well, you know the whole the whole idea of that is you know like a you know it's because it's not just them presenting the. The performance of the red shoes, because obviously you know there's no audience. We get we get views of it that are clearly not an audience watching. Right. I mean, it's it's supposed this ballet. to be. I know what you it's know, supposed so it's her, to be. Her internal conflict to you know Julian versus the dancing versus Boris. It, but and it's it's weird. In, but, yeah, it there is. There are weird. parts of it that I like. Um, I liked when the what was it? There was the. Um, I I didn't write this one down, but like the knife falling. Or not? What was it? So some other elements transform, like in yeah, cuts. something transforms into a knife, and I yeah. can't remember what it yeah, was. Yeah, I don't remember either. But that was kind was of it, interesting. It wasn't just flowers, was it? Maybe. Was it? But like when she Maybe. jumps into the shoes, that was weird. That yeah. made me uncomfortable. <laughs> I like. <laughs> no, I really like that. Uh, I really like that sequence um, where he puts the shoes and they they stand up on their end and then See, she jumps into them. I, I, I found that I, somewhat upsetting. You know, obvi- obviously it's a break from reality. But that, but, you and know, that's the, a little bit of the issue for me, okay? Because at that point in the movie, they have not established mm-hmm. anything that would lead us to believe that this is going to be supernatural. Mind you, I've never, I did not realize that the Red Shoes was an actual fairy tale, okay? Yeah. I assume it was one that <laughs> so had you sort of... You weren't viewing it as necessarily as a fairy tale. Right, and up until and, this know. point, we've not done anything fairy tale Esque. All we've done is sort of setting, and mm-hmm. then it goes from zero to like <laughs> one thousand percent fairy tale out of nowhere. And so it's not necessarily the fact that it's a ballet with that fairy tale superimposed on it, like mm-hmm. to make it more authentically a fairy tale. It's yeah. the fact that they didn't warn me what they were going to do. And so when she jumped think, in those shoes, I was like, what the hell just happened? It really I don't know. I, it might just be a limited reference pool that makes me think this, but uh, did you ever see Black Swan? Taron Aronofsky's no, uh, 
Um, came out a couple of years ago. Um, but also about ballet, a ballerina in a role that uh, that she's written. It's more of a psychological thriller, but it also it clearly owes something to the Red Shoes um, because you know while while it doesn't play exactly the same, you know we still have the female lead character in her first major dancing role and the the psychological uh, toll that's taking on her. Obviously, with uh, with Vicky here, it's uh, more uh, you know choosing her loves. Well, it's um, mostly just Lemon Tough being an evil vampire. <laughs> it's oh, the yeah, main issue too. in this yeah. story. Well, Black Swan, Black Swan does has lots of similar vampires. things in its yeah no, but its performances aren't done as sort of dream sequences, uh, more or less. But there are there are things in that movie that happen that uh, you're not sure. I mean, in retrospect, they didn't actually happen. You know, from oh, things right, we okay. later learn in the movie, uh, they're not as out there and ridiculous as as this sequence, <laughs> this dance right, sequence. Right, and that's that's the weird um, part. Is it like? <clears throat> but they're they're ridiculous in their own right. Um, Natalie Portman's character, uh, uh, and oh, what's her face? She was. I don't know. I never saw it. The dark haired, the dark haired girl from the, that '70s show. Oh, I know who you're talking about, and so does the audience, but. Yeah, I gotta look up Black Swan. Anyway, there's, there's a there's a sequence where they are hanging out, Mila Kunis, and they have a uh, they have a uh, lesbian encounter um, <laughs> that it turns out may have all been in Natalie Portman's character's head. Okay, and it's yeah. So you this know, is and a uh, the bit ending See? the ending is very similar. Um, in in what happens, um, so not to ruin the black swan for everyone, yeah, because <laughs> everybody's going to rush out and see it now. Um, yes. So well, now that I mentioned that Natalie Portman and Mila Kunis had a lesbian relationship in the movie, everyone's going to want to go see yeah, it. Yeah, right. I think that's the only reason anyone saw it. To I had no with. idea, so apparently, I no, it was actually it was a, it was a really good movie. I love Aronofsky. Don't get me wrong, there, but but it 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 owes a lot to this, and the changes it made made it a weird weird thing because it's more of a mystery thriller, whereas this is just a straight drama, a musical drama, which is weird in its own right, and maybe that's what you have. No, problems. see, but that's the thing is, <coughs> I, I love. Well, see, I don't think that bothers me. Mm-hmm. Not all of. I, I've never watched a mu- a ballet movie, okay? This is the first yeah. time. But I've seen plenty of musical musicals. And not all of mm. them are comedies, strictly speaking. Well, there's a few yeah. that maybe were supposed to be comedies and just aren't funny. Um, <laughs> but either way, most of them have dramatic elements to it. Um, yeah, well, you you need, well, you need drama you know even I mean. in comedy to drive the yeah, plot. But like, but I mean, yes, I know what you mean. Yeah. Or otherwise, yeah. yeah, you end up with Austin Powers. Um, <laughs> so my my issue here is that um, it's not. I didn't necessarily take those fantastical elements as being in her head, based on the situation yeah, when well, I was watching it. I took those as okay. being watch the magic of ballet transport you to this mystical. You know what I mean? That, like, yeah. this well, is what obviously, the ballet is. You know what I mean? That's what it felt like to me. Obviously, then you get confused when characters start turning into other people. Right. So, and, but but yeah. and, and at the same... Th- and that was the one part where I was like, oh, okay. Like, at that point. But that's pretty... Like, when Caster walks on to the stage and is transformed into mm-hmm. the other dancer, that's the first time where they show me that this is something about what she's thinking. Yeah. Up until that moment, that it just conflict. seems like somebody thought, I can make a better ballet. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I can make the ballet double awesome. Yes. Okay. No, I understand. I understand. Like, in fact, my saying. note says, it says, they tried to make, like, the better ballet. I mean, yeah. that, that's to, what it seems like. To, they tried to make ballet in a way where you don't. you you're more involved with it than sitting in the audience watching it on stage. Right. 
you know, because you're because you're in there, you're swooping around, you're everything's going on. Um, obviously, obviously, the ballet troupe they use wonderful, uh, world famous. I'm, I'm from what I'm told, though I can't remember their name offhand, or from what I've read. Um, and the fact that one one thing where the red shoes certainly goes better than Black Swan is that uh, my uh, Moira uh, Shear, the actress who plays Vicky, uh, isn't an actress. Uh, this is her first film role. She's uh, a, she is a ballerina. Okay. Um, Natalie Portman, an actress, a, a decent actress, uh, not a ballerina, but not a dancer, not a ballerina, not a dancer. And um, there's a lot of there's a lot of instances with with Moira. <clears throat> Vicky and uh, the other characters, like the woman, uh, when uh, when uh, Julian first shows up after being hired as the uh, as the uh, orchestra coach, and the doorman won't let him in. Yeah, <clears throat> and then that 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 dancer comes <laughs> in and, and takes him and takes her with him inside. Just like the way she walks is is yeah. A dancer, walk. yeah. You can you the way can she holds tell. herself. It, it's a you, yeah. You can tell these people are dancers, not actresses, because just the way they hold themselves. Not that their acting isn't good. No, they do you know, a pretty especially good job. especially Vicky. Vicky's a great actress. You know, there's sometimes when she's kind of staring off into three quarters front and not really engaging. Um, but uh, but uh, there's she's still you know she's she's obviously there's. I, I don't want to. I don't want to say she's obviously emotive, because that implies that there's no emotion in ballet. And you know, well, see, that's I that's think that's true. I think that that's, we're getting yeah. into something where, in reality, it's easier for a ballerina to go actress than become an, an actress yeah. to go ballerina, because she yeah, is think, acting. And, when she's dancing, yeah. she's acting, not the way that yeah, we think exactly. of with film acting, but she is acting. Whereas yeah. no, you're absolutely a, right. An actor is not necessarily dancing. Yeah, and you know there were all kinds of accusations after Black Swan came out about Natalie Portman using a double. And then, well, it, no, frankly, I, really I would think that if you're going to make a movie about it doesn't ballet, matter. maybe they should have gotten yeah. a ballerina. <laughs> yes, they should have. They should have. Like I've never seen the movie, but it just seems logical to me. Yeah, you know she wasn't especially bad in the places that it's clearly her, but she wasn't as good. Well, because you, when you watch <laughs> but, Vicky in this, she's just a ballerina. Yeah. You know she's a ballerina. You can just yeah. see she's a ballerina. Yeah. yeah, and she's really good, right. and she's obviously really good. You're not going, yeah. oh man, like Natalie Portman yeah. did a great job pretending to be a ballerina. You said, wow, look, there's it's a ballerina. Like, no. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the dance the dance is definitely beautiful. The choreography is wonderful. The, and, but I find that I find that whole sequence of the actual the actual play and her her whole psychological thing going on, I really liked it. I well, really I'm reevaluating it. it based I, on the uh, fact that yeah, <laughs> yeah, I understand where you're coming from and and not not getting into it. Um, I mean, I watched it. I, I enjoyed I did. it. I don't know because I generally yeah. like ballet. Yeah. But, there is there is a lot going on in that scene. But there's so. a few where I'm like, I don't know what's going on. Am I yeah. having a seizure? Like the like the part where everybody's in the background, like worshiping this st- stone idol. Yeah. Okay. Well, how about just... the thing with the with the with the zombies? <laughs> yeah, it's just for there's a, a lot bit. I was like, what's going, going on? on there? Like, I, I I interpreted them as zombies. Huh? They were some sort of I rag people. They were... <laughs> they were appearing to try to tear her face off. It's very confusing. <laughs> like the some of yeah. the elements, like the first part of that, I I found the sudden jump to fantasy jarring. But mm-hmm. generally, the dancing with that when he when she has the red shoes introduced and that part was fine. But there's that middle section where it gets all Disney pink elephant on me. And I'm like, I don't, are you going? I don't, are you going to have nightmares about that sequence? No, but you know what I mean, right? Like I'm, I, I watch yeah. you know Dumbo with my son, and I realize that like there's like four Disney movies that all feature like pink elephant dance number interludes that are just confusing yes. and kind of non sequiturs. The Winnie the Pooh one, the FLM. Yeah, sequences. exactly. Oh, there's all kinds of there's all kinds of nightmare sequences. And well, and so what I'm saying is that it got a little bit like that right there in the middle, and then it kind of eased out of it. And so, 
that was a bit jarring too. I don't know. Like, yeah, yeah. I guess I understand that, but you know, even and then again, like I also feel like sequences sequences like that in Dumbo are really jarring. Right, exactly, they know? are. They're so, super jarring. But yeah. here's the thing: my issue with it uh, with that sequence, and I feel like we're gonna we're gonna have to move off of this because it, we're an impasse a little bit. Is that maybe for me? The issue is that not knowing that this was going to be a fantastical story, okay? Mm-hmm. I thought we were dealing with just strictly drama, okay? Okay. About a ballet. Not knowing that it was going to be fantastical, I kept finding myself wondering why somebody thought they could do better than, do ballet better than ballet has been done for however many years. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It felt like somebody got uppity. About ballet. You know what I'm saying, right? Like, if somebody went in and added yeah. CG to ballet. It just doesn't make any sense, right? And that's yeah. why now, that in hindsight, evaluating the movie, I can say, oh, well, that was in service of the narrative being fantastical in nature. But there's nothing at the beginning of the movie that tells you you're dealing with a fantasy story. See, again, I thought that was well established when people were excited to go to the oh, ballet. Oh, okay, you're right. Sorry. <laughs> I missed that. <laughs> anyway. All right. Um, <laughs> so moving on, then, I suppose. Other things I like. Obviously, this movie has a, a masterful use of techno. Uh, yeah, technicolor. it's very pretty. Um, it's, it's a very beautiful movie. Um, the cinematographer, also very good. The choreographer, very good, but we've kind of already gone over that. This is, you know, this is a lot of masterful people coming together to make a thing. Yeah, it is. Um, it's really, yeah. I mean, there, there's nothing yeah. about it that's not well done. Yeah. And, you know, you kind of you kind of get that in the, like when, when Julian first shows up and, and Vicky first show up for the, for the first play they're in together, or the first play they they work together, um, you know, everybody doing their own thing in the setup of the. I love the door guy. Of the production. The, um, the yeah. um. Yeah. This was it. The set designer getting angry. The set designer the door who's just dirty. sitting there drinking. <laughs> yes. It but won't yeah, close. You know, it's great. Yeah, they're all great, and they're all very good at what they do, and they all come together to make this beautiful production. And obviously, you know, Boris uh, Boris wants to work with the best. That's what he does, and that's his... Uh, because he's an evil vampire. <laughs> he's not a vampire. He looks like a vampire a couple times. He does. He I mean, does. I'm, not, I'm not, like, saying so, it because he just, like, he get, every like so after, often he gets this really sinister look. Yeah. And it's like, was that man going to suck my blood? It does. It doesn't help. Like after the uh, after the one dancer announces that she's getting married, so she's leaving the company, and Boris storms off, and then the next scene is just him sitting in the yeah, dark. exactly. No, there's some serious weird brooding going on. Yeah. Well, like, yeah, he's vampire esque. It's true. <laughs> uh, um, this movie's also very influential. I I think you. Uh, well. You compared it to singing yeah, in the like rain, I, I that I, as soon as I started watching the movie, my my first thought was singing in the rain, and yeah. the the two thematically have nothing in common, uh, yeah. but they are so similar. Yeah, well, they're movies about making well about making a thing. Yeah, you know? and yeah. the weird thing is, I found myself wondering something while I was watching it. So now I might get really angry emails from people who are who like musicals more than I do yeah. but luckily I've never given them my email address so screw you guys um, now the thing is is that for me in my mind from everything I come to understand Singing in the Rain killed the musical by being the mm-hmm. pinnacle of musicals <laughs> and being such a yeah. meta look at musicals killed the musical basically okay well, I think it, I think I think singing in the rain follows the red shoes in making making musicals have to push an envelope more than they'd already right. done. Yeah, you know? right. Because this is obviously there's there's some influence on singing in the rain from this straight up. Uh, Gene Kelly loved this movie. Gene, um, the movie Gene Kelly made before singing in the rain was an American in Paris, and he actually made the crew, the production crew of. Uh, in American in Paris, watch the Red Shoes fifteen times before they started filming. Well, yeah, <laughs> which is 
Yeah, obviously loved it. And and it shows up <laughs> in Singing in the Rain. You can see it. It's there. The, even the mm-hmm. fantastical elements and certain dance sequences and stuff like that. Yeah. But the weird thing about it is, is that Singing in the Rain in a lot of... It didn't kill the genre. It just was sort of like the last one in a lot of ways. There yeah. were other ones, but it was... It's the pinnacle. There was obviously After more that, it all drops after that, off. But it was still... Yeah. And I, yeah. When I found myself wondering the entire... I was like... Is that have I in my entire movie watching life missed? Are there a bunch of ballet mu- <laughs> ballet movies that like was this the pinnacle and killed off the ballet movie? Is what I kept wondering to myself. I know it, it mm-hmm. isn't, but it's an awesome thought to me that up until this movie was made, they were like cranking out five, ten ballet movies a year. <laughs> no, I don't think yeah, that was happening. Um, <laughs> it's a good thought, though. It's ridiculous. It's, it's um, beautiful, is what it is. Also, apparently, the ABC also, produ- also used to uh, broadcast ballets, which is interesting in itself. That doesn't surprise. No, it doesn't surprise me. When you don't have commercials, to... when you don't have commercials, you have to fill in the time. Well, somehow. it was just neat to, to to hear. I was like, oh, wow, yeah. Well, you know, that's just that's what the BBC does. It's the national broadcast, so they gotta, <clears throat> you know. The closest American equivalent PBS broadcast ballets and operas. That's true. So, you know, it's just how it works, what it does. But the uh, the thought of ballet via radio was just interesting to me. I kind of was imagining, yeah, like, yeah. do they do it like sports casting? Yeah, I guess I didn't really make. Yeah, I guess I didn't think about how far that. Went. Like, I assume they just listen to the <laughs> music, see radio right? doing it, but and yeah. maybe describe the story or something. But in my mind, I'm like, okay, now Vicky has been thrown into the air or you know I can't imagine it's like I don't know the backup dance like, probably probably you treat it like an opera and you you play the music yeah, and you read the uh, that's what I figured you read too. the little notes the program notes about what's going on yeah so there's no uh, Dick Vitale of uh, yes no Dick <laughs> of, of, of ballet broadcasting <laughs> that's that's, Run that's down yeah down. exactly it's 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 my thoughts. It's like, yes. Well, I've never seen like anything like this in my days. That was the best pirouette I've ever seen. She's uh, gonna be a star. Pirouette. Pirouette. The one. The one ballet term yeah, we know. Well, it's gonna come up again, I'm sure, because it is the only ballet term I know. Yes. Uh, well, um, what didn't you like, especially? <laughs> I, well, I told you what I didn't like. Yes, you didn't I want like to know what you didn't elements. like. Um, it's I, I don't know if I didn't necessarily. You know, it didn't it didn't punch me. It didn't. Uh, there was nothing. I'm not going to go out and recommend this to. to I'll people. recommend I suppose it to people, people like who, dance if movies. I know, if I meet I somebody who I know them. likes musicals, I would recommend it. It's good. Yeah, yeah. If, it's a good movie. Yeah. I feel like I feel like the people uh, I know who uh, would be into this movie would have already. seen Yeah, this that's movie. the other issue. Yeah, it's like you're just gonna um, look like that guy who <laughs> recommends him. Everybody's like, "Oh, we've yeah, uh, we've been watching that for I'm years." I'm tired Thanks. of that. We've moved on, Pat. I I just heard about this great band, the Beatles. <laughs> yeah, Perhaps right. You, uh, I think you would. You'd really love to get into them. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I'm worried that, considering it's something from 1948. <laughs> yeah, because it's not like that. I mean, I've recommended 400 Blows to people, knowing, be, feeling yeah. fairly secure in the knowledge that they there's a pretty good chance they've not seen it. It's a black and white French film. You're not going to run into a, into a whole right, lot of people who, unless they're a pretty seen. hardcore film buff. I don't think they'll have <laughs> seen yeah. it, right? Whereas if you're into musical theater. Yeah, there's a, especially if you're into yeah, ballet. there's a really good chance you've probably seen this, yeah. and that I'm just going to look like yeah. an idiot. Yeah, and thinking about this in like terms of dance movies, you know, we talk about we talk about you know, obviously after Singing in the Rain, musicals didn't stop. No, no, you know, but Kelly in my didn't mind, stop making they sort musicals. Of did. But they sort of did because they're like, but you know, knowing that this they exists, did slow down, and then they stopped, seeing, they they made and then fewer. Seeing, of them. Yeah. Than seeing all of the crap dance movies that come out. Wait, wait are we talking like like, you know, uh, like Bring It On or something, things, or uh, what are yeah, all those things, things ste- like that? Uh, what is it? Things, it's like things, Step things, Up or whatever. Step Up, yeah. 
and try to try to dramatize dance and just don't don't at all get to this level. Yeah, and that's weird um, because there's drama there. Yeah. You could because the dance is just a means of conveying conflicts, right? In the story, yeah. and then the resolutions yeah. and things like that. Um, yeah, but yeah, in the in those kind of movies, I guess they're more. It's more just like a sideshow. And now for the dance yeah. number. You know, it started. They all follow the same basic premise as like break in or something. You know, if they're not trying to win a contest, they're always trying to win a contest. Yeah, Whatever usually the to save they want to win a contest is. If not, yeah, or maybe give you know, that with was a different real movie. popular in the eighties. That was real popular in the eighties, and that's what break in was about. You know, saving a community. Well, yeah, but I don't like, remember break know, or like nowadays, break it on and those. But they have a similar yeah. like we have to win this yeah. because some super high stakes yeah. thing. I'm a Jake. Yeah. Well, now it's you know the always the Romeo and Juliet love interest thing. You know the the girl classically trained gets transferred oh, yeah. to the urban school. Um, that's like She's the plot of inner city. the last ten of these things. Yeah. The fusing of urban and, and, and ballet and or not even ballet, just classical dance. You know, it's <laughs> hey, my mind re- I just started fusing really interesting dance styles. <laughs> Tap is involved in every single one, Adam. Tap fused with insert other dance maneuver here. I want to see a tap pop. I want to see a tap mo- a tap mosh. There you go. I really want to see a tap mosh. Or uh, yeah. was it? Um, yeah, any of them be great. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. Just thinking thinking about this as as like the pinnacle of a genre that I'm not really into um, is is one thing. But this is itself such a great movie. Um, I really like it. I really no, did I like, like it. it. Um, I mean, I'm not. I only have about one scene to complain with. Unfortunately, that one scene yeah. is like forty-five minutes long. Yeah, I don't. I don't like always a narrative that ends with our main character dying. But <laughs> well, yeah, but it. I don't like it when people do it because they just feel like that would be an yeah. awesome thing to do. But this feels logical yeah. for the story, right? We know yes, in this the feels, beginning this that works. the red shoes ends that way. Yeah, obviously, obviously, yeah. Uh, her situation mirrors the situation of the play she's in. You know that that she's she's dancing and dancing and dancing and can't stop dancing. You know, in the in the fairy tale, it's it's the supernatural, the red shoes. You know, but in in the reality, it's just her her desire to uh, be the best. Yeah, and to to grab onto that, and she's being pushed to that by Boris. And and he's much much yeah, better at pushing weird way, than he's apparently. He's almost kind of the red shoes. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, he's 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 pushing her, and you know, to I don't. At the same time, though, I don't feel like the movie ever tries to imply that he's in any way responsible for her death. No, no. You know? There's a, the only. It's still her. Moment, it's her active yeah, choice. It, the only moment that feels even a little bit that way is when he goads her in the dressing room. When it becomes a conflict mm-hmm. between him and Julian. That's the only yeah. time where I go, in my mind... But Julian's also responsible. Yeah. It's not that it's just him. It's just that Julian's slightly more likable. <laughs> yes. right? He doesn't look like an yeah. evil vampire. Although he looks it's true. marginally he more like an evil vampire in that scene than he does in any of the other ones. Thanks to his tr- yeah. black trench coat or whatever the hell it is he's wearing. Um, yeah, that is that is one thing. The choice she has to make, you know... Is she's being for? She's essentially being forced to choose between two men. You know, one one is an actual man you know, a, a relationship, and the other is just this the in, know, in, enigmatic the, concept of dance. <laughs> yes, but still, as represented by Boris, and Boris being you know the the pinnacle of of directorship or whatever. Um, I think there's an actual term for for what he does. Yeah. It's not director necessarily, but anyway. <laughs> Um, Something, yeah, but uh, you know, and 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 to a certain extent, the fact that it boils down to just her choosing between two relationships are, is a little annoying. Yeah, um, but it's it's still it's the conflict. That's you know? the other weird the, thing is that it doesn't. That's the one other unsatisfying element. And I don't have a problem that she dies. I have a problem with the way she dies. Mm-hmm. The dancing doesn't kill her. No. Running off the edge of a balcony does. 
<laughs> Which is where it falls, where the whole red shoes thing falls apart a little bit for me. You know what I mean? Just that one part, like the way she dies, is a little bit like, huh? Like, yeah. They could have found a way to actually make it kill her. Yeah. Well, that's that's one thing. If you if you pay attention in that last bit, um, when she dies, she shouldn't have had those red shoes on yet. You know. It's, they're not to that part of the production. Right. Um, so the fact that she dies with the red shoes on is, is you know, a symbolic Well, see, thing I assumed that, it that was a fantastical element. I assumed her shoes weren't actually red. I, would, I mean, that's that's possible, too. I assumed that you know, they were just the, humoring the lady who's dying. <laughs> the act of Julian taking them off and then the whole fantastic sequence of, of giving them back to to the, the evil shoemaker. <laughs> And him putting them back in the window, you know, ending ending the movie the same way the play ends, right? Um, certainly lends to that that interpretation. Yeah, so I'm I'll not. Yeah, I'm not convinced that she was actually ever yeah. wearing, wearing red shoes, but yeah, maybe and maybe she wasn't meant to be. But you know, at the same at the same time, even if she wasn't, that's the director, I think, the directors, uh, you know, putting putting a bit of symbolism in there to right. suggest that it's the dancing that's killing right. her. You know, but it's not. It's ultimately not really the answer. It's right, killing. and that's it's the, the issue. Conflict, it's, you it's, know? it's the conflict, you know, and then also, which that's the thing is in the red shoes, the play that's described to us. Mind you, I've never read it, but it's described to us. It's the actual dancing, not the yeah. conflict yeah. that kills the main character. Yeah, but you know, it's still, it's 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 the play is you the. the the ballet is used as symbolism, but obviously it's not a one-to-one thing. Yeah, it's you know? it's and, and you can always choose to not be in but, the ballet. And it's a little bit frustrating. Well, like, but there's, I'm sure yeah. you could have. They, they yeah. as a she's, small, as, as a pretty niggling complaint, I just feel like they could have made it so that because it, but the red shoes are supposed to be symbolic of her love of dance in general in the play yeah. and in the story yeah. in general, right? Like this, this passion yeah. kills her. So they mm-hmm. could have made it so that the, her passion for this thing is what kills her, rather than yeah. the conflict between yeah, it's not, passion it, and her other yeah. passion. It's not like she collapses under exhaustion, or you know, like she, yeah, something like dance. Yeah. I don't know. I can't imagine, but I'm sure they could have yeah. written something that would have allowed her to die from her passion. Um, yeah. But then again, I don't. In, instead know of as a response to being to being forced to choose between right, her and then in the yeah. end the. Way she falls, I ended up watching it like four times. Okay, uh-huh. because I was like, yeah. "Huh?" The first time I watched it, I literally was like, "Huh? What? Did, uh, is she dead?" <laughs> like, I was really l- confused because it just seems like she accidentally falls. Oh yeah, and I so mean, there's, there's that like, element too. It's like. And if it's it if it seems to break if it's the story. that she accidentally falls, if it's that she accidentally falls, if that's really how it right. how it is, but it's so then, hard to tell. No, I think I think that actually makes makes it more her passion, you know, killing her, you know, because she's so into it that she doesn't she's not paying attention to what she's doing. Right, but she's she you know, falls. I think, I think that actually works for Julian, what you want to say, which means it's her passion yeah. for Julian that kills her. Oh well, yeah, it's you, madness. You it's, a, this too. is this is a rabbit hole that we could go down for. <laughs> Ever. Yeah, we really because could. it doesn't. We really it, could. That, that last of bit is not quite as clear as it should be. Yeah, and then you know it basically ends with no resolution to yeah. that. She dies, and then yeah, uh, although I did enjoy moment, but... after that where he dances without her, where the mm-hmm. spotlight is on the space next to where he, she should be. I think. That yeah. was kind of interesting. Yeah. I enjoyed that. <clears throat> and then, yeah, the spotlight is on the shoes for a little bit. Yeah. Where she should be, but where she isn't. Yeah. I, I enjoyed that part a little bit, but... Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it was... It, that, that that felt good in the story. Mm-hmm. Because regardless of whether or not... She, what killed her, because it's... that Like I said, that's, that's... Like we were talking about, that's so up in the air. Yeah. At least it acknowledges that she's dead and that there is remorse for the fact that she's dead. Yeah. On, on Yeah, not just from yeah. Julian. Yeah. Boris Boris gets his remorse too, I think. So but yeah. 
Oh, also he really plays good a mirror like a boss. Not at that scene, but earlier yeah. that was pretty awesome too. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. That man, that man sees me. <laughs> yeah, it's is pretty really awesome. <laughs> he is. He is a great actor. Yeah, it's true. Uh, <laughs> that's. I know, imagine that exactly was what I, I bet he just broke that mirror. This is maybe, maybe. <laughs> like I said earlier, this is this is a film where so many experts come together to portray something so expertly. <laughs> yeah, no, I, it, it is a brilliant movie. And yeah. it is only pretty niggling little details that bother me. It's yeah. not the yeah. movie. Yeah. It's just a few elements that, if they were just a little bit different, would have made it perfect. <laughs> Maybe. For me. Maybe. I don't know. I guess I guess I can't I can't argue that by saying I think the movie's already perfect because I I don't necessarily right. think that's a perfect movie but I don't think anything. Well, it's certainly the best ballet plat- movie. I've I don't ever believe seen. in platonic ideals, but but if there were a platonic ideal of a ballerine <laughs> ballet movie, I suppose. This yeah, it's would be as it. close as I think we're ever gonna get. So. Yeah. Anyway, um, that's about all I got for this. That's uh, that's all I got. So, I. Uh, Thanks for listening once again. Uh, this is Lost in Criteria. Um, next week, we'll be talking about the 1997 Iranian movie Taste of Cherry, directed by Abbas uh, Kurosatami. Oh, we're going to have to work on that. Uh, which I, th- I think I almost got, but I know I didn't. <laughs> Thanks for listening. We'll yeah, see you, see next, you next time. time. to Lost in Criterion, a production of With Two Brains. The show is hosted by Adam Glass and John Patrick Oatari Dorgan. Jonathan Hape did the music, and Adam Glass also edited it all together. Feel free to contact us by email via lostincriterion at withtwobrains.com or join us on the web at www.lostincriterion.com.